Yeehaw! This episode is sponsored by Wix. Go to wix.com slash go slash simple history to create a website now. How to Survive in the Wild West The Wild West was seen as the states and territories west of the Mississippi River in the United States during the Big Push West that started in the 1840s and lasted to the 1890s. Though there were fortunes to be made, life was undoubtedly tough and very dangerous, so this is how you survived in the untamed West. Weapons Virtually every man carried a weapon of some sort in the Wild West, from the sneaky gambler who had a two-shot derringer up his sleeve, to the U.S. Army soldiers with their muzzle-loading Springfield rifles which were eventually converted to breech loaders. One such firearm of the period was the trusted, reliable six-shot revolver made by such legendary companies as Colt, Remington, or Smith & Wesson. Ranchers and hunters would ideally have a rifle or shotgun. Interestingly, in cities like Tombstone, Deadwood, Dodge City, or Abilene, there were gun control laws. Wildlife Rattlesnakes, scorpions, mountain lions, wolves, and bears were a big threat and was a good reason to carry a gun. Rattlesnakes and scorpions will aggressively defend themselves if they are startled or feel threatened. Mountain lions and wolves will simply see you as their next meal, while bears will just tear you apart as they are very territorial. So know your surroundings and carry your gun with you at all times, as well as a knife as backup, especially as there were no anti-venom or antibiotics in those days. Bandits and Outlaws Just like the highwaymen in 18th century England, many gangs and civilians operated in the Wild West, like Black Bart, who would prey upon lone travelers or stagecoaches. So if outnumbered, hand over your money and live to fight another day. Indian Wars The settlers and the Native Americans had been fighting on and off for centuries. Though eventually many tribes and settlers had found peaceful ways to coexist with each other. Sometimes Native American raiding parties to all-out war occurred in the frontier states as settlers pushed further west. For example, there were the Comanche Wars from 1836 to 1875, the Sioux Wars from 1854 to 91, and the Snake Wars from 1864 to 1868, which involved the Northern Paiute, Bannock, and Western Shoshone tribes. Invading Armies For a long time, California, New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas were Mexican territories, but this was disputed by the European settlers, culminating in such struggles as the Texas Revolution, 1835 to 1836, that resulted in the last stand at the Alamo in 1836, and the Battle of San Jacinto, also in 1836, and ended with Texas winning its independence. So, avoid Texas for a while but also avoid going back east during 1861 to 1865 as they were having a much bloodier conflict called the American Civil War. Land Disputes There was a great competition among the settlers for land, grazing rights, and water resources. These often resulted in bitter and deadly conflicts, often referred to as a range war. It normally involved European cattlemen, farmers, and miners fighting to protect their self-interests. The Pleasant Valley Range War from 1886 to 1892 in Arizona was one such example and was between the cattle-owning Grams and the sheep-herding Tewksburys. But if you wait until the Taylor Grazing Act of 1934 is passed, this cleared up a lot of the potential disputes from happening in the first place. Legal System Falling foul of the law out west could simply result in a lynching without even a trial. And often, if it did go to court, it was more about local policies than whether you were guilty or not. Saloons Drunken bar brawls happened, but they rarely turned into shootouts, and many towns required guns to be left behind before entering. But strong beer was cheap, and it certainly helped fire up a cowboy's need to let off steam after months of being out on the trail. Things could still turn deadly, as outlaw Samuel Rattlesnake Sam Johnson found out when he refused to pay the 25 cents he owed for his drink and was gunned down by the bartender in the argument that ensued. Though the real danger you could say was the heavy drinking lifestyle that evolved out in the West. 
1830, people were thought to be drinking the equivalent of 7.1 gallons of pure alcohol a year. That's over a pint every single week. Disease. Disease like dysentery, typhoid, cholera, and tuberculosis were not uncommon back then. Hospitals were virtually unheard of. Antibiotics and effective vaccines were still decades away from being available. There were many qualified and well-meaning doctors out in the West, but there were also many fraudsters who just rode into town and set up shops saying they were doctors. Often, these unqualified doctors did more harm than good. So it's best to boil your water, practice good hygiene, and avoid anyone that is continually coughing. Climate The climate varies drastically across the western frontiers, with the freezing winters of South Dakota, where at Sioux Falls it once dropped to as low as negative 42 degrees Fahrenheit, to the constant heat of the Texas Great Plains, where temperatures rarely dropped below 81 Fahrenheit in the summertime. Extreme weather. Tornadoes have been said to lift up cows into the air and deposit them crushed and broken miles away. So consider building a storm basement and hopefully you'll be safe. If you are caught out in the open, lay flat against the ground to form a vacuum seal, and that in theory should stop you from being blown away if a tornado passes within a few hundred yards of you. Survival skills. Knowing survival skills were crucial to surviving out in the West with all its challenges. You had to know how to build a temporary shelter if you got stranded by such things as a snowstorm or if your horse dies suddenly. You had to have a sense of direction in case you got lost, even know how to navigate at night by using the stars. You had to know how to forage off the land and set traps for such things as jackrabbit or beaver. And the need to know how to source water was easy enough in some states, but in ones like Texas and New Mexico, it was much harder. Out there, you could die in less than a day without water because of the parched and dry climate. You even had to be your own medic at times, knowing how to stop yourself from bleeding to death from a wound. Clothing. Without the right kind of clothing, your chance of surviving the Wild West were slim to none. In states like Arizona and Nevada, a wide brim hat was vital to stopping you from getting badly sunburned, and a good pair of leather cowboy boots were essential to protect yourself from snakes and scorpions. Whereas in the Dakotas, temperatures often plummet below freezing for months at a time. So a good pair of long johns and an oilskin jacket could mean the matter of life or death at times. No welfare system. Apart from your extended family, or if you came across a kind and supportive charity, there was no social safety net if you became ill or unemployed. Putting money in the bank could be very prudent, but if it was robbed, you couldn't claim the money back as it was seen part of the risk of living in the Wild West. Keeping your wealth under the bed was full of dangers, whereas buying government bonds was a safe bet, but it was such a very long-term investment, presuming you live long enough to collect on the bond. Whereas investments were full of its own kind of problems, including the 1857 financial panic, which was followed by a year-long recession. Then in 1873, the financial sector nearly collapsed after a downturn in the global market and overinvestment in such things as the US railways, sparking a deep recession that lasted about six years. Look after your horse. One way to travel vast distances was by horse, which could do 30 miles a day if watered, fed, and rested regularly. This meant a frontiers man could travel long distances in relatively poor terrain carrying adequate equipment and supplies to survive between a week to 10 days, easily enough time to make it from town to town. On the other hand, if he was on foot, he would spend more of the day traveling and was likely to cover only an average of about 20 miles per day. The real danger was that he would have to carry his gun, blanket, drinking water, food, cooking utensils, and any equipment he might need himself. After three days, he would be out of food and water, his feet would be blistered, and he would be exhausted. So he was confined to short 50-mile journeys between towns, and if faced by hostile Native Americans, he would be forced to fight them. If you had a horse in such a situation, you would have the option to flee. A horse would cost you around $60 about $1,828 in today's value, so it was a good investment, and it was well worth taking the time to look after. And lastly, life itself. Right from the beginning, life was difficult and deadly. It wasn't uncommon for either the mother, baby, or both to die in childbirth. Then there was the dangers of childhood itself. Disease, malnutrition, and neglect 
all contributing to an early death. But the good news was, if you survive past the age of 10, your likely life expectancy was a healthy 53 years of age. And if you survived all this, there was plentiful land to grow good crops or raise quality cattle. Or if you felt lucky, you could join in on the many gold rushes that kept on occurring. Howdy, partner. Now you know how to survive the Wild West, you can survive website building with Wix. Go to wix.com slash go slash simple history to create a website that's customized to what you want to do. Whether you're a novice, a business owner, an advanced designer, or a professional website builder, Wix has great features such as Wix videos, Wix Pro Gallery, Wix bookings, and solutions for all kinds of sites such as e-commerce, music, hotels, events, restaurants, and more. Go to wix.com slash go slash simple history or simply click the link in the description below to get started.